Hello folks, Dead Set here. And this is an impromptu sort of rant slash review type of thing. So I'm not going to be talking about art here. Um I just got to finish watching the first two episodes of Rings of Power. Well, actually, I watched it maybe about it's three. I started at nine o'clock. The first two episodes, one hour per episode. So it was about six hours ago. And I have not been able to sleep since I watched it because I don't even know what it is that I watched. Now, first of all, I'm not jumping on the hate bandwagon. Um, I sort of knew that they were going to butcher Tolkien's work when they started to diversify it and I knew it was going to be a bunch of woke nonsense also but what I was not expecting was something so incoherent and something so far removed from what I've read in the Silmarillion I mean okay first of all let's start with this I've read Lord of the Wings I watched the cartoons um, the rotoscoping I've read the books multiple times I have Book of Lost Tales 1 and 2 I have The War of the Jewels um, of course I've read The Silmarillion about a dozen times in fact I remember the first time I read The Silmarillion I finished it while I was in Germany and I don't know why I placed some type of significance to that but I was on my way back to England and I was on the train from Lahnstuhl back to Frankfurt to catch my flight out um, back to London. And I think we flew out of Gatwick, but that's neither here nor there. And I was on the train and I finished the book and I closed it in reflection because I have this thing like everywhere that I traveled, I would always buy the books from the authors of that region because I something about traveling and seeing things is I'm a black American and I have this sort of romantic notion about seeing cultures and their works that they built for themselves because I know that doesn't exist for me I mean we can take the 4th of July for example Nearly everybody in the United States celebrates the 4th of July. Blacks, whites, uh, Latinos, Asians, you name it, we all celebrate it. And they could even be immigrants. They celebrate it. However, it's almost as though I know too much because I cannot celebrate the 4th of July. I spend every 4th of July reading Frederick Douglass's work, or What is the 4th of July to the Negro? Because I've always had the sense that um, black people are, well, we're basically stepchildren to the United States. Yes, we are Americans. And one of the reasons why I call myself an African-American is because, you know, we didn't just spring up from out of the earth. But also this country was not built for us. It was never intended for us. We were the tools used to build it, but it was not built for us. And that's the sense of history that I don't have in this country because there is no it's home, but it's the home that I don't have any sense of belonging to. Even though I served in the military, even though I bought my property here, even though I am embedded in the culture, I am an American. That's my nationality. That's what I was born as. I speak the language. I know the culture. I've lived. I've gone from coast to coast and a few American territories. But when I go to other countries, such as Brazil, um, England, Germany, um, Japan, whatever the case may be, and I look across the landscape at their cities, I know that those people built that for themselves and there's an entire lore behind it. There's an entire history behind it. They interface with other cultures, but it truly belongs to them. And so when I'm reading works especially great works such as Tolkien or if I'm reading Shakespeare or if I'm reading I don't know um, who else did I read um, Alton Sterling whatever the case may be Herman Melville um, you can 
you can read the culture in their words because they're talking about cultures that were built for them. They were talking about environments that were built for people who are like them. So I carry that with me when I'm reading the works of Tolkien. So when somebody comes along and diversifies that work, it no longer makes any sense to me because I know why Tolkien wrote those works. Tolkien wanted to write a new lore for his people, for British people. And um, <laughs> the orcs did not represent black people. Let's just get that straight. And I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole because it's so ridiculous. I don't even want to talk about it. And I also am not in the habit of defending white people because they don't need my help defending them. I mean, they've done a bang up job, job of defending themselves for how many centuries? So this isn't even about that. What this is about is the diversifying of things that should not be diversified. Tolkien's work is a period piece that has the sole intent of writing a lore for British people because of his love for the British Isles. And fortunately enough, his son carried out that legacy and defended it. Now his grandson, <laughs> oh boy. If you don't have anything nice to say, be that as it may. So looking at the way that the rings of power just butchered the story and so-called filled in these gaps, it is a jumble of incoherent nonsense. Very beautiful nonsense. I mean, the cinematography is great. I really love that. And there are some curious moments there that, you know, there are moments there that's like, OK, let's see what happens next. But at the same time, I'm almost sorry that I know the story so well and know the player so well, because I feel a sense of. I don't know, I feel a sense of betrayal when in one scene I saw the hammer of Feanor and they're talking about the Silmarils. And I really feel a sense of betrayal when looking at Galadriel, who is not even remotely a likable character. I mean, she lacks the depth and the grace and the power that Galadriel, Galadriel has in the original works. I mean, in, I don't even want to nitpick so much, but the fact that they cross the, that they cross the sea on boats when we know that they walked across the Helicaraxi. And yes, I know that I'm nitpicking, but there are things there that just that just bothers me, such as the fact that, you know, they decided to, you know, pull out their sword saying, um, go and attack the enemy in Middle Earth. Earth. Yes, that did happen um, because the host was led by Feanor. But we also know Galadriel had no love for Feanor. So. <sighs> Yet she in this series, she's acting with the fire of somebody like Feanor. And I've got a problem with that because it is a complete betrayal to the character. It, it, frankly, I don't even know what I watched. That's the problem. And the fact that they're actually comparing this to House of the Dragon, which is an excellent prequel to Game of Thrones. I mean, the first two episodes were just fantastic. I love the actors. I love the I love the direction of the story. I love the fact that things are now, you know, the wheels are starting to turn because the you know, the games the games are foot now. What I'm watching here in Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power anyway, it's not really the Rings of Power. I mean, the thing when they were talking about Morgoth, I found it interesting that they spoke of Morgoth and how he looked into the Silmarils and then, you know, could not look at him again when he saw his own reflection. They focused on that, but they never focused on the I mean, she came into Valinor with with Melkor 
shrouded in darkness and she basically devoured the light from both trees and um and i think this is essential because it showed that melkor well number one it showed that the light of the trees and what she was devouring especially the two silmarils that she ate from melkor's hands was just it just made i mean the description of what the description that Tolkien gave to Ungolian in that moment before she wrapped her tendrils, her shadowy tendrils around Melkor, where he would not give her the third Silmaril. Oh my gosh, it is a thing of nightmares if you have that type of imagination. And I never forgot what I felt when I read that because I'm slightly arachnophobic. I don't like spiders. I don't like the way they move. They just creep me out. But yes i was waiting for something like that but no they just showed the trees darkening and that just made no sense to me because while ungoliant may be a fringe character she is pivotal to the story of melkor and while i know that this this is that the rings of power is not focused on that it's just that they're going, they're using these names and they're going into the backstories. And they did uh, make mention of the Silmaril, of the Silmarils and the name Feanor. But what they didn't mention is things such as Galadriel's. Basically, what they did was they combined Galadriel and Feanor into one character and then made her the hero of the story without talking about the faults of Feanor. Because if anyone remembers, um, Galadriel gave a tuft of her hair to, of course, Gimli. And I think she's only given her hair like maybe twice. I'm not sure about that. But Feanor asked for a lock of her hair and she would not give it to him because her hair in her hair. One of them, I mean, she's tall and she's beautiful, but in her hair also exists the remnant of the light of the original trees. And that's something significant, significant to Galadriel as a character. I mean, she's extremely powerful. She's uber powerful. But what they've done in this story is they've reduced her to some, I don't know, an angry Karen with a petulant attitude and pouty lips. It's just, I mean, her lips aren't even pouty. It's just like she's a child here. And this woman is supposed to be thousands of years old with power just that's just beyond anything that most characters have because I mean her power level is like my art level. I still don't know what it is I watched. I mean granted if if I can remove the original lore of Tolkien from the series I just might, just might be able to enjoy it a little bit. But I just can't do that. I can't undo the history that's in my head. And one of the things I really have a problem with is diversifying period pieces. So I'm going to go off into another tangent here. The One of the biggest mistakes that Hollywood is making is the diversification of period pieces. I just watched, well, what was it? A few weeks ago, I just finished The Irregulars on Netflix. It's something that I had been putting off for, what, just about a year? Because I saw it was mentioning Sherlock Holmes, and then it had this mixed guy playing Watson. And usually, out of curiosity, because I do like um, the Sherlock Holmes series, I would watch something, well, Sherlock Holmes series, I like the Benedict Cumberbatch um, Sherlock series and, you know, Arthur Cannon Doyle's work is legendary. You know, I, Sherlock Holmes was an arrogant prick, but his deductions were entertaining. However, when they took that period piece in the Irregulars and then the, they diversified the community, then it no longer became the England that we know it was and granted this is a work of fiction but at the same time it's just like wait a minute 
that would not have happened at that time. This makes no sense. And the real danger is this. Most people do not get their history from academia. I mean, let's just face it, especially here in the United States. Most of our history comes from our entertainment. There was a show on Oprah many years ago, and it was a show about bullying. And Oprah brought um, brought all of these adults in one group of adults. This the first group of adults that they brought in. These were the adults that were bullied. And the funny thing about it was that these adults were carrying this trauma of bullying, you know, still in their adult life. And Oprah, what she did was she was giving them a chance to face their bullies. Well, then she brought in the bullies and the victims of bullying started going in on them, making their accusations. You did this when I was in high school, junior high school, whatever the case may be. And the, <laughs> the most interesting thing is that none of those bullies even remembered who those people were. So <laughs> it was I never forgot that show because it was almost hilarious. It's just like, wait a minute, these people, you are so unimportant to these people who bullied you because bullying is sort of a part of life. And you build character by standing up to bullies and then bullies learn not to bully, but by getting their ass kicked by the people that they were victimizing. And so it's a win win. And I know I'm oversimplifying it, but that is how it works. Well, one of the victims and this is where the history part comes in. One of the victims made this statement. She said that I was I went. No, she said she used she would focus on the people who on the person that bullied her for a long time. And then she went out and saw this movie called Flatliners. I don't know if anybody's seen Flatliners, but it was an old movie with um, Kiefer Sutherland. And it was all these people who were faking their um, basically going into clinical death to analyze death. They were like this group of college students. But what they found was that they were haunted by the people that they had hurt in the past. So this woman went and watched this fictional movie and then decided that her bullies were going to get what they deserved in the end of the day. Basically, it was karma. But her karma, her sense of karma was derived from this movie, Flatliners, and she was absolutely serious about it. And that's what I was in maybe what, high school when I saw that movie. But it was then that I first discovered the power of media and the power of education through media. Right now, we've got. We've got a media that's full of misinformation. And part of that media is the entertainment that we consume and the entertainment that we consume is very important because that's we that's number one history is recorded in the mainstream and part of our sense of identity comes from our entertainment because Americans consume so much of it and so when we're looking at the rings of power and I'm looking at these period pieces and their intention intent, and their intent being, I don't know, watered down or being altered by diversifying. Then what you're doing, well, what they are doing is they're taking away the identity of the people who actually made this. Because, I mean, let's face it, back then, those people were not concerned about race. Race hadn't even been invented. Most of what was going on there, what most of what was going on then was that these people were trying to figure out how to survive and they built their culture around that. And this goes back to the sense of wonder I get when I go traveling and I see how these people built their lives for themselves. This is part of the story that they tell themselves about their own identity. And that's the importance of leaving period pieces alone. You can alter history by altering entertainment. And that's what's going on here. And this is dangerous in entertainment for the reasons that I've already mentioned. People get their history.
people get most of their education from their entertainment. Media is propaganda. Education is propaganda. Information is manipulative. I mean, case in point, we got a whole group of black women out there complaining about the patriarchy and ascribing that to black men when there's never been a black patriarchy in the history of the United States. But this is what information does. This is what revisionist history does. This is the danger of entertainment when used irresponsibly. Well, I'm not going to go on much longer, but a few more things that I need to rant about with this rings of power. Um, I am interested in the Harfoots. There seems to be there seems to be some interesting things going on there. Um, I'm still angry about the Fianor bit because, as I stated, Galadriel had no love for him. And I do believe that what they did was they combined Galadriel and Feanor and just basically made a female version of Feanor. Furthermore, they should have told more about how the light of the trees were darkened because I know Ungoliant is a very terrifying figure, but that is how the light of the trees were darkened. I mean, she devoured the light and it's a, it was a haunting thing. I mean, any Tolkien reader knows that you cannot talk about the Silmarils without talking about the affair between Melkor and Ungoliant. And of course, we saw um, in Peter Jackson's version, Lord of the Rings, Shelob, who was one of the offspring of Ungoliant. Shelob was horrible enough. Ungoliant was about a thousand times worse than Shelob. Um, also, at the end of the second episode, I'm wondering if that light inside of that box is from the Nalglamir. Because if it is the Nalglamir, I'm going to lose my shit. <sighs> However, I hope they stick to the lore, at least in this matter, and that it, it's Moria Silver, or as the dwarves call it, Mithril, because Mithril does come from Moria. So um, hopefully that's what we're looking at. And the dwarves would be, well, at this point in the second age, they would be secretive about it. Anyway, I'm going to end this. This is getting kind of long. <sighs> I'm going to continue to watch. And I'm going to try to separate what I know of the Silmarillion and what took place at the Second Age. And I'm going to try to enjoy it. Um, there is, There are some interesting things taking place, but still at this point... I'm not sure what I'm watching. So like, share, subscribe, leave a comment.